for that depth from the lens to the herbarium specimen at about 29 inches with a 50 millimeter focal length lens. <coughs> So shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, because we're providing the light and we know exactly what color it is and it's very bright on the specimen, I need the, be I need the sensor to be less sensitive to light. It doesn't need to be extremely sensitive to light. So that means a lower number. And the lower the number, the crisper, the picture, the less grainy, the less noisy. You'll hear this term noisy or grainy and that refers to the, it kind of looks like an old television when it just doesn't look clear. And we want to capture our specimen images in RAW. Canon allows you to shoot RAW, anywhere from RAW to small JPEG. RAW big JPEG, RAW small JPEG, large JPEG only, etc. So you choose. And for archiving purposes, capture RAW. This is really important. Where will your images be saved? You want to think about the movement your images will make from the camera to the computer to the computer that's going to do the processing if that's not the same computer and into which folders thereafter in its processing lifespan before it goes into the archive. So where do the people who are taking the pictures who may not know anything about your processing workflow, where do they save those pictures? With Windows, Windows has um, individual usernames. You can log in as individual people, have your own desktop on the same computer, unique to you. If you save your images to that folder on your unique user desktop or in your unique user, or user picture folder, other people who log in cannot see it. So if you're the imaging manager and you need to see all those images, you need to make sure that your digitizer save it to a place where you can access it. And Windows provides what it calls a, a public folder, or public pictures, or public documents. You want to make sure that the pictures are saved there so that everyone can have access to them. And we end up using uh, just folders that have the digitizer's name. So there's no question who took the pictures. And we ask them to make sure that when they get started, they get started with their imaging se session, that they save the images to that folder. And you can change all of those things here under preferences. This is a really nice feature. It's called Live View Shoot. Just like the name implies, it allows you to see in real time exactly what the camera is seeing. So if, I move, this is, if this is my hand and I move it, the camera sees it's moving. So it looks like a live video. And I use this for a number of things. So on our copy stand, where we place our herbarium specimen sheets to take the picture, I don't want to guess every time exactly how to line up my herbarium sheet relative to my camera. So I put down a template. I put down a piece of paper or a blank herbarium sheet that is exactly the size of my herbarium sheet. And I adjust my camera so it takes that exactly positioned spot every time. And it's helpful to use the live view to orient that template just so there's a little border on either side and nothing more. So I don't have to crop afterward. Likewise, if you have um, specimens that have a, a great uh, depth of field, meaning they're three-dimensional and the camera lens in autofocus might focus only on the top of that fruit, but in focusing on the top of that fruit, you're missing the collection label in focus, you can manually focus the lens, flip it from autofocus to manually focus, and use this little square to find a middle point or to take two pictures, one where the label's in focus and another where the fruit's in focus. So as I said before, this is where you take your picture. When you've never taken a picture for with your imaging setup, you have to adjust all of these until you're satisfied with the exposure and the color balance. So you might end up taking a number of pictures before you get it just right. And how do we know when we've got it just right? Well, you first Look at your picture. And looking at it at 50% isn't going to show you much. So you double click on it again and zoom in. What are the things that we're aiming for? What are our photography goals? We want it to be in focus. We want it to be color balanced. And we want it to be well exposed. So we zoom in. 
Look at the specimen at 100% magnification. Does it look crisp? You may not know straight away. You get familiar with how well your lens really focuses. So this is never going to look like the image that comes out of the herb scan. You can't expect it to. But at 100%, if it looks crisp, that's as good as it gets. And I always tell my digitizers to check every 15 specimens or so. Check the first one, and then every 15 or so to make sure that they have not knocked the camera out of focus. Because if they take 800 pictures out of focus, they have to do it all again. And then we go back to this color checker. You'll notice, here's our color checker. Here's our scale bar in every picture. And it's always in the same place in every picture. I tape these down so they don't move. The specimen top of the sheet is always next to them. So every picture from New York looks the same. And these color values stand for number values here. And when I'm in Digital Photo Professional, which is the free imaging image viewer software that comes with the Canon, I can see right down here some numbers. And when I move my mouse over that white square, I see these numbers change. When I move it over every other place on the sheet, I see these numbers change. But in this white square, I know those numbers should be 243, 243, 242 for red, green, and blue. And if they're not that, then I go up here first and I change the color temperature. Maybe my light source is a little bit blue or it's a little bit reddish from the spectrum of very cool colors, bluish, to very warm colors, reddish. So I move this between a range of what is close to daylight. I don't want to go too cool or too, too warm because then I'm capturing what isn't true and I, I'd rather adjust here. So this is kind of a, if you think about this like a microscope, this is my macro adjustments. These are my micro adjustments. So this is the Kelvin temperature and then I've got a white balance shift. So this is a coordinate plane from, I don't know if you can see the color difference very well, but it's purple, red, to yellowish, greenish, to turquoise. So you move the cursor to a point so that you get these numbers as close to this as possible. You want them to be as close to each other as possible and as close to the value 243 as possible. So if you find that your value for red is 269 and your green is 243 and your blue is 242, you need to click this and bring your red lower. So you push it away from the red. So you play around, put the points on here, take a picture, see how that changes the number of values. And this may take a lot of pictures, 20 pictures, until you get it just right. And we really want to try and get it just right, because you can. And then once you do, the light isn't going to change. So the next person who comes along, they just have to check those numbers haven't changed and go on with their imaging session. So you set it up, because you're the person who knows about all of these settings. And then every digitizer after that doesn't have to think about it. They just have to confirm that those numbers are that. OK, when we think back to what Melissa said yesterday about our workflow, we name our images at the point of image capture as the barcode on that specimen. If that specimen doesn't have a barcode, we do not photograph it. We need to capture the barcode in the image. It's the only way to know, without question, the unique identifier for us, for uh, that specimen. And how do we do that? There's a little tool up here that if you click that, it says rename, it opens this window. And you can use any combination of strings. So I've put in the first field the barcode number. Um, and you can see the original image file name, which is just a random number. Well, it's a sequential number um, given by the camera. And I change it to the barcode. And you can see here this extension .cr2. That's the Canon RAW file format. How many pictures do you take of a specimen? It's really up to you. You may want to take many. There are a number of reasons why we might take many. Some have literature associated with the specimen and you want to capture every page. Some have packets in which there's stuff that you want to show, but you can't open the packet without obscuring the label or without obscuring the barcode. And we know it's critical that the barcode be in the picture. So you take a couple of pictures. And you still need them to all be named with the barcode, 
but you can name them in series after that. And I've only given it two, two digits because I don't expect that we will ever reach a point where we will take 100 pictures of a specimen. But who knows? Um, all right, so I talked about cannons. Let's talk about Nikons. Nikons are a little more expensive. Um, we just acquired this one. This one's a really high-end range. The other one was a 21 megapixel. This is a 36 megapixel and still a full image sensor. Still use a 50 millimeter lens. We still have the camera positioned around 29 inches off the surface. That has to do with the focal length of this. One thing you'll notice on the camera, on every camera, there's a, where is it? On every camera. Should have looked before I spoke. <laughs> There's a line usually that tells you exactly where in the camera is the image sensor. So you can measure with a measuring tape from where that image sensor is to the shooting surface. With the Nikon, this software comes with it, which allows you to view the images you shoot. This one does not. This one allows you to remotely shoot. But you remember, Lightroom or Aperture allows you to do that too. So if you already have Lightroom for other purposes, you can use it to tether to your camera and take pictures. And then again, the power source and the USB. So this is a Nikon setup. This is a setup with the Bencher copy stand with the lights that come with it. These rotate a little bit, so if you need to adjust. And a laptop. So we have individual work imaging stations with laptops. And then the images that are captured on these laptops go to a bigger computer for them to be processed. Just like the Canon software, the Nikon remote shooting software has places where you can adjust all of the things that affect exposure. So the shutter speed, the f-stop. Here's the live view. So you can see in real time exactly what you're capturing. Here's a different type of color checker. I forgot to mention with the other, with the other um, software, you can, you can press the shutter button by pressing the space bar. This one you can tell exactly which key you want to have press the shutter. So if you know you're always going to use the X or the return to activate the shutter, you can tell it that. I always like the space bar because it's big. Everything I can do to minimize the physical movement that taxes my body with every repetition you want to do because your digitizers will get fatigued. Also, you want to think about whether they're sitting or they're standing. They're going to take the specimens on their side, put them on the copy stand. Think about how they're going to move and how you can make it easier on their bodies. There's the autofocus and shoot. <clears throat> this is the image viewing software. Like I said before, raw image files can't be opened by every type of imaging software, especially those that come right out of the box with your computer. So the Capture NX2, which comes with your Nikon camera, does do that. Um, and just like with the other camera, or the other camera software, you want to check every 15 to 20 specimens. Make sure they're in focus. Make sure they're color balanced. In this software, to rename the image files, all you have to do is click the image. And then it'll highlight the image file name, and you scan the barcode with the barcode scanner. So we never type the image file name into the computer by hand, because we will make mistakes. But we can trust that a barcode scanner won't. So we want to eliminate